Hi guys, welcome back to the barn. It's new tool day. Well, it's a chilly one today. My little Triton planer has had more use in a few weeks in the small barn workshop than it ever did in the small loft workshop. Primarily that's because of the type of projects I've been doing. But it's also because in the small loft workshop it was a little bit too noisy and far too dusty. I have two shop vacs in this workshop. I have my Festool extractor which is my primary extractor when using routers, dominoes, sanders and also my Evolution cat carrying box like battery powered extractor which is useful as a secondary takeoff. But when it comes to extracting large chips from the planer, they are no good. They just clog up instantly because the bore of the pipe is not big enough. So I wanted a extractor with a larger bore hose. So I found this Shepak online for what I thought was a reasonable 104 euros, so around about 90 pounds, from the French website Mano Mano. So I thought I would buy it and give it a go. Now my experience with Shipak is a little bit mixed. I had for a while the small Shipak bandsaw, which has now gone to the tool graveyard in the sky. I was always having to mend it, and I actually made a video about it and called it the worst tool I had ever bought. And my thoughts on that still stand, it probably was the worst tool I ever bought. Now some of that was my fault. I bought it in the UK and brought it here, and when I unboxed it here it was damaged, and I could have taken it back to the UK, and I chose not to do, I just ran with it, so most of that was on me. But even after I found it was faulty, and to be fair it was a bent base, other parts kept falling off it. On the other hand, when I took you to my dad's workshop last year, he has got two Shepak tools, a bandsaw and a dust extractor, that he's had for 40 years, and they both work perfectly. So maybe something's happened with Shepak over the last 40 years, and they've gone from high-end professional tools down to the more obvious tools which this would be one of them. I thought for 104 euros we'll give it a go. So let's open the package and see what's in the box and then I'm going to walk it up to my planer and we'll give it a go. Okay so the box is quite big so it's the DC100 dust extraction system aspirator as they are called in France and on the box it says it's a dust extraction system, a filter, some filter bags and a collection of hoses. It has a 65 litre drum, it's 1200 watts, it filters down to 0.3 microns, it has a 2 metre long pipe which is quite short and it weighs 7.5 kilos. So let's do the magical unboxing video and see actually what it looks like. Polystyrene. Okay, so the box is empty, so I assume that all the parts are packed inside it. Now, straight away looking at it, this is metal, the top's plastic, on off switch. There's a couple of screw holes there, that looks like it should have an angle on there. It's actually a little bit larger than I thought it would be, which is not a bad thing. And it's obviously a little bit different from some of the older models I've seen, which is more metal top and a band around the top to tighten it on. These have just got these two clips. Okay, so that's in the bucket. I've actually threaded the cable through the dust bar. Get that out. That's his filter. I'll have a look at that in a minute. I won't prise it off and break it. So that's the top on off button and a cable. Standard issue cable. Euro plug of course for me. Probably a two metre long piece of cable. They don't spoil you with cable these companies. Compared to the Festools I have. Very plasticky feeling cable. And then in the tub we've got the two metre hose. Which again not very long. Be nice if it was a lot longer but it is what it is. Some instructions, don't need them. Bags for the filter, four number bags. Two Jubilee clips, these will be to attach the pipe at each end. And then an assortment of dust ports. One. Ah, an handle. Number 32, 
Bradford City. Will be number eight, Manchester United. Okay. Step down hoses. One, two, three. And a little diddy one. And that's it. By the way, I'm joking about the instructions. I need to find them now. Instructions DC 100 in 87 languages. Make sure all the parts are there. And the filter cuff goes on, the bag goes on. So basically, we've got four pages of instructions, three of which are pictures. Perfect. I suppose the first thing we should do is this filter actually has a rubber mount on it to sit round the motor impeller. And then these bags, which are very paper like. Just sit round there, fold in like that, and then go back on there. Easy. In fact, looking at the size of the filter, it looks like the pump filter socks that I bought a shed load of will also fit that once I've run out of them paper ones. I'm not sure how much them filter bags are, but I think I paid about £4 for 10 of them swimming pool filter bags that I use on my little Evolution cat light -like carrying box battery operated. Right, I can now put this top back on. What I haven't seen yet are some fixings for this handle. There go on, that goes on there. There's nothing else in there. That's the handle that goes on there. So where are the fixings? Not in there. Not in there. Not in there. Do 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 handle handle. Doesn't mention anything in the instructions about fitting the handle. That's not a good start with two screws missing for his handle. That's an email to Mr. Shipak then. No, I guy, just a quick interjection. I've been editing some of this footage and I forgot to say I actually found the screws for the handle. The plastic bag that the two Jubilee clips came in, the screws were tied into the knot at the top of the bag. I didn't actually have the camera running when I found them, but I thought for clarity it was important just to say that Shipak did actually dispatch the screws. It just took a while for me to find them. Right, back to the mug. It'll affect the way we work. And. Not very long. Is that two metres? I suppose I should plug it in really and make sure it works. Oh well that sucks. Right, let's fit one of these then. Very generous with their Jubilee clips. A bit tight. Okay, I've seen all to over tighten this with that being plastic. I'm sure it's easy just to crush and break that. There. Found it. Now it makes sense. So we've got the pipe on, and on the pipe we've got that option. I don't think I've got anything that that will fit. Or oh, we've got all these options. Interested to see what this fit though. the actual airlock system that came with the Evolt. So none of them would fit. So I'll probably have to resort to my favourite foam tape trick. This is a problem with all these dust extraction. The manufacturers across the systems obviously just don't talk or just ignore each other because nothing ever fits anything else. It is really annoying, even when the manufacturer making the same thing. So the, the little the little evolution up there doesn't actually quite fit the evolution saw, which is always a little bit annoying. Wouldn't it be lovely if there were just a standard bore size for 
dust extraction systems, you know, maybe three sizes, a 25, a 50 and a 100. And every manufacturer just made them sizes and everything fitted everything. Wouldn't it be brilliant? It's like Apollo 13. We've got to get this to fit that to gain re-entry. Let's have a look at the back of the band. So anything fit there? No, it's too big. <coughs> Excuse me, moi. So no. No, the bandsaw did come with its own 100mm outlet, I need to find that. This is the bandsaw coupler from Record. So that fits the bandsaw. Does that fit there? No. Does that fit there? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So could get that to fit there. That does fit the dust pot on the back of the Rage 5. It's a bit of a beast. Anyway, let's have a look at the main event and see if it fits the Triton planer because that specifically is what I bought it for. There's a few reasons why I've still not made a stand for the planer. First of all, I've not had time. Secondly, I want to get this wall finished before I do something permanently. And lastly, I actually wanted to get some kind of extraction because if I'm going to build a car, it might as well be a joint car for both tools. Will this fit that? Not with that won't. Not with that it won't. Okay. Not with that. That's about 10mm too big. That's too small. That's too big. That's too small. There's no point putting a smaller piece in there because you're just stepping down and, and stopping the chippings from being extracted. So we might as well go to the next size up and go round and I might have to use my old phone trick to get that to fit. That's annoying. So this is the foam tape I like to use. Look at that. You see, I could have got a job with NASA all along. We're now primed for the entry. Let's put some timber through and see if it really does suck. Going down, going down, going down. Okay, it's done its job, it's over the shavings up, which is all I really bought it for. It's just quite annoying that none of the parts fit each other. You can't point that criticism all at Shipak. It's different manufacturers not working with each other. It'd be interesting to know whether this perfectly fits any of Shipak's own tooling. But it'll certainly improve my chip collection in here. So a little experiment for another day. I wonder whether I can attach this maybe with a cyclone system in the carport in here somewhere up high up and then send my dust extraction pipe through the ceiling void and drop it down into the workshop ceiling once I have a ceiling that is and then keep my dust extraction out here be something less in the workshop so it'll create a little bit more space and it'll keep the noise out here rather than in there I could plumb it up with some four inch pipe and then have the flexible hoses on the inside just to plug into various machines. So that's something I will experiment with, but not for now. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it interesting. Certainly be interesting to see how long this dust extraction lasts for. Hopefully it will last a bit longer than my last Shipak tool. And I'll keep you posted as I experiment with it over the next few weeks and months. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you again later. Bye!